our own hallmarks, distinguishing features of our partnership. And together with the African friends, we will start building a sovereign, independent future. This is what we're offering to you, a future. Africa is a young continent with 60% of its population below 25 years of age. So these are youngsters that will build the future, a freer and a better world, a juster world. So this topic of the round table is of paramount importance for everyone, not only for the African states, but also for, for our country that has a lot to offer to the Africans that can further develop and tweak its state-of-the-art technologies and solutions that the Africans are interested in. I wish everybody successful work and deliberations today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Alexei Maslov. Distinguished colleagues, dear friends and guests, I subscribe to what Madam Abramova has just said with respect to science and education being the main platform for cooperating with Africa. Education gives us freedom of thinking, a new one, a brand new quality of that freedom. So we are to overcome the post-colonial syndrome when we were guided by someone else's standards imposed from out the outside by someone else's approaches in technology and education, we are to start elaborating our own proprietary joint programs. And definitely in the past, in Russia, the African studies were neglected. Today, we started preparing training and educating them. Only three universities in this country today train Africa studies experts, which is definitely insufficient, bearing in mind huge interest towards that continent in science, education, technology, and the reciprocal interest from the African continent. Today, we revive the studies of African languages, because understanding a language means understanding the mindset. And starting with this year, in a number of secondary schools, Swahili and Amharian languages will be taught in, in a, a number of schools, which never happened in the USSR. So the Yoruba language and Somalian language and other Zulu language and others. Now we are training a new generation of professionals that will be knowledgeable uh, of uh, African mindsets and uh, st stages of development. Uh, so the questions that the issues that we were discussed to discuss today, like the network universities, joint curricula, joint labs, training top-notch professionals, is the guarantee of our successful development for decades to come. So both parties should understand it's a two-way street and work for the mutual benefit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Maslov. Just mind how succinct the moderators have just been. So just I, I remind you that we have the time limitations. We have two key speakers. They will take seven minutes each. No more than seven minutes. Are others, those wishing to take the floor, please confine yourselves by five minutes. And now I yield to Mogilevsky Konstantin, Vice Minister of Science and Higher Education of the Russian Federation. Your Excellency, Mr. Maslov, Madam Abramova, dear Vice Speaker, Excellencies, Ambassadors, distinguished guests, long-lasting relations with African countries. We have had since the Soviet times a huge number of African students were educated in, in the USSR and received degrees. They shaped the high quality and high-skilled elite of their countries now want to raise the 
availability and accessibility of our education for Africans. Currently, around 35,000 African students are taught in Russian universities versus last academic year. We have a 4,000 students increase over the 13 years, as Mr. Melnikov, the vice speaker, has said. The number of African students has increased threefold, and in some for some countries, it is even higher, like the Egyptian students have increased their numer numerical uh, value seven times, more than one third of all African students in Russia originate from Egypt. Education and, uh, and Science Ministry has quotas for each of the African countries, and each year the quotas are increased. Definitely, you must have noted that in your respective countries, the plan for 2021 was 2.1 thousand uh, seats, and last year was 2.3 thousand scholarships, and uh, 400 and s 400 and s 4,700. Yep. Scholarships are appropriated for the forthcoming year. Now we have 31 bilateral agreements in education with African countries, eight uh, Mauritius, Algeria, Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, and others are quite actively cooperating with us. We are preparing more bilateral agreements with Uganda, Egypt, and Morocco. This will also be one of the relevant points and discussions at the forthcoming tomorrow's Russian Egyptian Intergovernmental Commission to be held in Cairo. We will we are finalizing the mutual acceptance of de academic degrees with Eritrea and the uh, agreement will be signed on the sidelines of the Russia-Africa summit in this summer with higher on higher education with Mali, with Lesotho, with Mauritania and Central African Republic. We are going to pursue further much active cooperation and sign bilateral agreements during the summit to intergovernmental memoranda on scientific and educational cooperation will be signed with Ethiopia and their education ministry. I cannot but note the role of some of the specific Russian universities, like the People's Friendship University of Russia in 2022-2023, 923 people from African countries entered that university, 2,800 African students are now taught there, and for two presidents one prime minister and 15 ministers from African, current and incumbent ministers from African countries were educated in the People's Friendship University of uh, Russia. We definitely appreciate the, their contribution. And the Patrice Lumumba name may be returned to that university, another participant of that active cooperation, Russian, Russian social Russian State Social University will open information centers in Angola, Mozambique, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and a, an office will be opened in South Africa. Russian Humanitarian University is assisting in uh, preparing a, an exhibition, a historical exhibition on the liberation of Africa. And I thank the members of Parliament of Russia for facilitating this work and like the installing uh, the preparation to install a monument to the liberators of Africa is in Zimbabwe, but we need a closer and more formalized institutionalized mechanism of interaction between directors of universities, the principals. So we have the support, the initiative of Russian, of the president of Russian Union of Rectors, Mr. Sadovnichi, to establish an association, the Association of Universities of Russia and Africa. And our ministry definitely will participate actively in the preparation for the forum of Russian and African universities on the sidelines of this summit in the summer 2023. We established last year Russian African Net Network University, 
with 46 Russian educational establishments and two research institutes and from Russia and 11 institutes from Zimbabwe and one university from Uganda. We know that Ra the universities from Senegal, Sudan, Malawi, Gambia are considering participation. In, in April, Russian delegation is, to, is scheduled to visit Egypt to discuss that matter with the Egyptian colleagues. A few words on interaction between Rafu and our colleagues from Zimbabwe. We coordinated a list of practical joint projects like the soil, soil maps of Zimbabwe design rapid tests of oncology and cancer diseases, the, establishing the first center of mineral reserves in Zimbabwe on, on their soil. And, the, and Russian Geology Exploration University has come up with a concept for that center that was approved by our partners as the backbone, as the foundation. A few words in our cooperation in science and s and interaction. Now we have two intergovernmental agreements in place with Mozambique and with South Africa and eight memoranda with Botswana, Burundi, Zimbabwe, Burkina Faso, Uganda and others. Just a couple of examples. For more than 30 years, the Institute of Evolution and Environment in Ethiopia has been work, working hard and in mountainous areas of Ethiopia, microorganisms have been studied in soil, and uh, the pest studies are also pursued. Russian education, higher education, and science ministry, together with Ethiopian partners, will establish a joint center for biological research. The Earth Crust University in Angola is working to study two cyber light tubes in the east of that country. Two days ago, the first educational conference between Russia and Africa was held on the subsoil use, and uh, many of the ambassadors of African countries to Moscow have participated in that. And uh, well, the Science and Education Ministry of Russia this week has unveiled the uh, open call for grants among Russian education and, and academic uh, establishments to participate and receive grants. We will select five nominees that will receive the federal budget co-funding in case the private co-funding is there. They will receive 20 million rubles each for five years. Dear colleagues, with due respect, we treat African countries and our African friends and colleagues. Russia studies African languages. Resting on a very serious, very extensive um, Soviet experience, we plan to develop African studies in Russia. And also, we note a great interest in the African young people in terms of studying the Russian language. Dear colleagues. Our relations in the area of education and science attest to the fact that Russia certainly is not uh, exploiting uh, Africa just like other countries try to do, taking away different resources, including intellectual ones uh, from that country, from that continent. We stand up for the joint work in the area of uh, science and education for the sake of uh, well-being of our future generations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Constantin. And send that I'm passing the floor to Mr. Bugayev, first deputy minister of education of the Russian Federation. And after the two presentations, we will collect three to four questions to the previous speakers, and afterwards we'll move on. The moderator, Your Excellences, uh, Mr. Ambassadors, Dear colleagues, dear friends, and dear participants in that very important event, 
I'm happy that the cooperation with the African nations along the lines of the Ministry of Free School Education in Russia acquires a new impetus, especially this year. Today, we're working on the implementation of a large-scale educational project on promoting the modern Russian schooling, also the Russian language training abroad, and we are paying special attention to our traditional partners in the African continent. We know that 144 uh, universities of Africa already provides Russian training. I'm confident that uh, thanks to our joint efforts, there will be more such um, institutes and uh, universities. Our work will help to open a whole network of um, Russian language courses and studies, which will comprise of 27 such centers. Following the instruction of the Minister uh, for School Education in Russia, Mr. Kravtsov, the interaction and cooperation with the 27 centers was distributed among the educational and pedagogical institutions that we are in charge of. Such an interaction helps to build a system of work to bring about a common and shared educational environment in terms of the general schooling and to the instruction in the Russian language. We are promoting the partnership relations with the interested parties uh, in African nations. Some of our universities have already paid visits to their partner countries where they reached agreements on how to implement the educational program. Certain memorandums of cooperation were signed between the professional universities. And on behalf of the ministry, I might say that we're not lagging behind our colleagues from the universities and uh, academia. We have scheduled a number of visits to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Angola, Mozambique. And we hope that we will visit other countries, other partners, and friends, too. Besides, we are taking part in the sessions of the Intergovernmental Commissions. These days, our colleagues and colleagues from other ministries and departments are part of a business mission to Egypt, being present at the 14th session of the Joint Russian-Egyptian Commission on the Commercial and Economic Cooperation. We also are part of setting up the Russian branches abroad in terms of the vocational education. Our African colleagues uh, are very um, happy to get such a cooperation. Let me note the fact that uh, cooperation in the area of vocational education may help training the necessary workforce needed for, for the Russian and for the African economies. This is a win-win situation, and we are acting as absolutely equal partners in that area. And we're going to elaborate on that. I would like to take advantage of this opportunity to invite our colleagues to take part in our championship movement which goes on in the Russian Federation. There will be two major contests of professional excellency, work skills contests, one of which would be held in St. Petersburg and the other one in Nizhny Novgorod. We expect that African participants would attend that. In order to promote the Russian language in Africa, we are developing being the Russian instruction abroad area. Thanks to the work of the Russian teachers in a number of countries of uh, the near and far abroad, we set uh, very close personal and interdepartmental ties, and we're confident that this program has a great future for the development in Africa. The studying of the Russian language it also implies that our cultures would uh, develop on both continents, and we attach great importance to the work with our youth organizations. The child mm, camps such as Smena and other always welcome our partners from Africa. These are about our traditional ties, traditional contacts, and we're ready to elaborate on that and develop them. With the help of the Ministry of School Education, we have set up some electronic platforms, such as the Russian e-school. We are glad that the Russian e-school, just like acting as a site for interaction, 
uh, is very much welcome by African partners. Uh, more than 1,500 uh, people from African states uh, got registered on that, and we hope that this work will go on. In order to discuss the main vectors for the development and to discuss our cooperation in the area of uh, school education, we plan this year from 7th through 9th of uh, June, along with our colleagues from the Republic of Tatarstan, we plan to host uh, the ministerial session in the city of Kazan. And we invite our African partners to attend it, and we rely on your participation as such very much needed and long-awaited event. At the same time, along with other ministries and departments, we are continuing to the preparation of the second uh, Russian-African summit meeting, which is a key platform for our bilateral interaction. And I'm confident that we will discuss uh, bilateral issues there naturally. To conclude my remarks, I would like to say that this is only the beginning of our joint work. I'm confident, I'm confident that along with our colleagues from African nations, not only we will uh, reach a new level uh, for studying the Russian language and the Russian literature, but most importantly, we'll make sure that uh, uh, we will recover what uh, we had during the Soviet times, the in development of the personal relations between the school children and students from different countries. And let me share one of my personal cases. I started in the Moscow Mining University. Now this is part of the Moscow Agricultural Academy. And among my mates there were my close friends and associates from Tanzania. Altogether, we defended our PhD thesis, and we are still keeping in touch. And I'm sure that such personal relations make us um, get closer to each other. And I do think that we are going to develop our bilateral cooperation along these lines and following that example. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. you have any questions to the two keynote speakers? We, the moderators, are watching the time, and actually we are in the limelight, and therefore we do not feel at ease, unlike those sitting in the room. Do you have any questions, or we'll postpone the questions until the end of the session? I don't see any raised hands, so I suggest, dear colleagues, to... I will pass the baton to Irina Bramova from the Institute of African Studies. Once again, good afternoon, dear colleagues. And immediately I would like to warn you that I will have to tell all our speakers that uh, there is one minute left for their pitches so that we all are equal and have enough time in order to speak up. If we have some time for our Queen Day, we will give the floor to people from the flu and we'll answer certain questions. First of all, I'd like to invite Mr. Anare Rasulun Zatuvu, Deputy Chair of the National Assembly of Madagascar. Your Excellences, First Deputy, Heads of the State Duma of the Russian Federation. Colleagues, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellences, uh, Mr. Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen present in that room. First of all, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the Russian Federation and especially the Russian Parliament to which uh, proposed that initiative and suggested that we attend that special international conference dedicated to the African issues. 
Saying that, I would like to convey apologies on behalf of uh, Madame the Chair of uh, our National Assembly, which who had a very busy schedule, but nevertheless, she honored me to be the head of the delegation from Madagascar, and this is with great pleasure that I attend that conference, which is called Russia and Africa in a multiple world. You know that Madagascar supports multilateral efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, the topic of our roundtable discussion is the parliamentary support cooperation in the area of science and education. And we understand that education and science and research are clearly very important for the development of any country. People who got education act as locomotives, as the main drivers for the development of their countries, and they are the ones who would uh, develop uh, cooperation in terms of R&D with other countries. But very often such people are not very well represented in the national parliaments, uh, certain committees. And uh, the role of such people of science and education in developing certain policies is necessary, in my opinion. Efficient integration of science uh, in uh, political decision making would very much improve the language of the laws that we are passing in our parliaments. These laws and regulations, I think, would be more efficient and it would work for the sake of the society in general. Any parliament, first of all, is called for to work in the interests of um, the local country and the scientific approach is totally needed, just like uh, certain approaches are needed in the sphere of education. That's why we have to work both from bottom up and uh, horizontal at the same time. So that means that the people of education and science have to be able to take part in the R&D uh, of international projects, uh, which work for the sake of uh, the whole society. When we speak about cooperation with other countries, we first of all imply that R&D, research, uh, academic exchange, which would be accompanied by certain discussions, the work of the technical experts, different workshops and conferences. All these things should bring about practical result, material result, and these things should really contribute to exchange of best practices. These endeavors should result in some practical work being done, and certainly this has to be accompanied by necessary laws and uh, regulations. If we are very much interested in the development of uh, laws and regulations that would help us to sufficiently fund research and development as well as education. I believe that uh, the budget earmarked to education and research is not sufficient enough. And the best part of this funding could go to develop international cooperation in the area of R&D and education. In Madagascar, we have uh, a scientific research center, center of technical research, and 
it gets about 5 billion local money. Which is actually a big percentage of our GDP. Also, we have a scientific and technical council of a national level. I think that if the parliament supports such centers, they would work most efficiently, especially in the area of engineering, aerospace research geological research, molecular biology, metallurgy, biology, chemical industry, environmental protection, hydrocarbon extraction, etc. We believe that the parliamentary support of cooperation in terms of R&D is extremely important. This is what we want to ensure. I'd like to thank you for your kind invitation for the opportunity to speak up at this conference. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. And you know, actually, you have hit the point. On the one hand, the expert community should be part of the political decision making. This is important not only for Africa, but for Russia as well. But. Uh, the second point is the decent funding of uh, R&D and education. On the average, actually, about 0.5 percent of GDP has been allocated to the R&D, whereas the most developed countries actually get about 4 to 5 percent of the GDP earmarked. Our second speaker for today is Kiman and Dmitri, head of the Department of International Cooperation of the United Institute of uh, Nuclear Research, and uh, probably you, you will dissipate this myth of uh, Africa that many non-experts have in Russia that Africa, this is a territory of backwardness and poverty. Does Africa have any real science and how you interact with them? Thank you. Thank you so much. Certainly. I will do that. And good afternoon. Mm. Dear participants in that conference, Mr. Moderator, Ladies and gentlemen, this is an honor and privilege for me to speak on behalf of an R&D institute which is located in a little city of Dubna, 100 kilometers away from here. But uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the International Intergovernmental Unified uh, Institute of Nuclear Research, which is uh, uh, made up of uh, more than 100 international organizations from all over the world. The Institute is one of the acclaimed leaders of the modern science, and we are executing international integration in science and research. We have several centers which are called uh, mega science centers. Despite unstable and fragile international our situation, our institute remains an island of stability, and we attach great importance to the base, um, basic science. And uh, we are focusing on the uh, problems which are of paramount importance for the whole mankind. That has been reflected in a decision of the Committee of Permanent uh, Plenipotentiary Representatives of. Uh, nuclear sectors uh, establishments in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, saying that cooperation in science is of eternal nature, of principal nature. Cooperation matters a lot for well, well advanced countries in, in nuclear, peaceful nuke sector, as well as uh, the newcomer countries, the novel countries, novices. So our institute is, um, is an important platform for developing this scientific diplomacy, and we also enjoy synergy between the cooperation of Russian Federation with uh, on the cooperation of Ru Russian Federation with other countries. Around 20 percent of organizations that are members of the uh, partnership network are situated in Russia, and I'd like to cite President Rwanda. Paul Kadami, that who said that assistance is good when it 
helps provide smooth operation of all systems and training of personnel so that one can further on start acting on on its on their own independently this is the approach that we profess and we have a well established training programs and we have been cooperating with Egypt and with South Africa on training nuclear peaceful nuke professionals our partners actively participate in the in the forefront sectors of science including the uh, super heavy ions collider and nika construction and other sectors we offer state of the art cooperation to all countries so distinguished members of parliament would like to draw your attention to the fact that this format of in, an inter governmental international cooperation with the entities that are on Russian soil may be regarded as a window of opportunity and a point of entry for cooperation with Russia. So we are convinced that scientific and academic and research cooperation should know no a state or race or any other boundaries. So this is the principle that we implement and profess. Thank you very much, Mr. Dmitri. Thank you for your insight and thank you for making it into the timeline. And our next speaker will be a representative and a member of Chamber of uh, Deputies from the Arab Republic of Egypt, Madam Doha Arsi, Egypt is a big friend of ours, of the Russian Federation, and I think that Madame Asi will tell us a lot how our countries interact in science and education. Good evening. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be attending this conference in Russia. Thank you for the invitation. It is a huge step forward in relations between our countries. I address you and the people of Russia with words of gratitude on my own behalf and on behalf of all the MPs of Egypt. I express you our utmost respect. The relationship between Russia and Egypt trace many years back in history. It's not about Egypt alone, but with all other African countries. This is true for all African countries, not only Egypt. Russia has been supportive of the liberation and emancipation movement in Africa in 1970s. Russia supported the African countries in their struggle for liberation and, and against racism. The public institutions were built with Russian help and assistance, with the assistance of the USSR. That helped establish infrastructure in Africa. You have always rendered us full support. And we know that you regard us as a partner, irrespective of the political expediency. You have been willing to cooperate on an equal footing at different levels. Russian, the Russian Federation has built a huge dam in Egypt and established the system of personnel training and advanced training. And there are also plans to forge closer interparliamentary cooperation which happened in 2010. 
So uh, that is to encompass different spheres of uh, bilateral relations between Russia and uh, Egypt. So as I said, we have had a long-lasting tradition of cooperation and with our rapidly growing economies, we must cooperate in technological sphere, factory construction in science. And on the level of our regions, we also must pursue cooperation. So we signed memoranda on scientific and cultural interaction in science. The Russian Federation has been accepting African students, and the quotas have been rising in 2022, 22,000 students were received by Russia. The Egyptian people believes that the Russian people is its friend, and uh, the Egyptians know Russian history well. In 2017, a committee on friendly ties between Russia and Egypt was established. And back in 1967, we founded Russian Cultural Center in Cairo, which was quite important. It was a milestone. We hail it as a very good step forward. And one year after, another center was built in Iskander. To promote Russian literature, the parliaments of African nations, as well as Russian parliament, play a huge role in bilateral cooperation. In particular, a great deal of plans and projects is being implemented, like a joint Russian-African forum on education and technology, which is significant for our cooperation and uh, with a view to step up parliamentary interaction and support for knowledge intensive spheres and technical sciences in particular. This matters a lot to to attract investment in these in these spheres. Thank you for very much for your uh, invitation. Now I'd like to invite to come on to scene head of Department of International Cooperation of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Mr. Vorfolomeyev Anton, and I'd like to thank our presenter from Egypt. She has noted duly that there have been two Russian cultural centers established in Egypt, and they may be uh, may play the part as the foundation, as the, the cornerstone of interaction. Now there are only eight such centers in all Africa. In the Soviet uh, times, there were 30, and two of them are in Cairo and Alexandria, as I said. And now over to um, Mr. Anton. Your Excellencies, dear moderators, dear guests, friends, the Russian Academy of Sciences for decades has been implementing um, bringing into life joint projects with African countries. And the African countries are not merely a subject of, of, of studies for Russian uh, Academy of Sciences, but also are full-fledged partners and credible friends. For us, Africa is a, an independent actor in international academic cooperation. Let me cite a quick example that was mentioned by Mr. Konstantin for more than 35 years. A 
joint Russian Ethiopian biological expedition has been in place and operating, uh, established as per the decree in the Soviet times, and now it is governed by a, an agreement between the Russian Academy of Science and the Minister of Innovation and Technology of Ethiopia. This is a joint center, it's not accidental. Russian and Ethiopian professionals work together, resolving different goals, studying and looking into bio safety which is one of the key applied spheres of science for the years and decades to come. As, a, as an outcome of the uh, meeting between the Russian president and uh, the Ethiopian president in 2019 on the sidelines of the first Russia-Africa summit, it was decided to turn this uh, expedition into joint research center and we have approved a draft project of intergovernmental agreement on the operation of that center and we hope that this agreement will be signed and enacted shortly in near future and we could kick start this project till the beginning of the forthcoming summit and the water resources use is also another sphere of our interaction the russian academy of sciences has been systemically facilitating the consolidation of uh, the research potential of uh, and capability of Central Asia in water resources management <clears throat> and overcoming the, the erosion of the Oral Sea coast. And we suggest that we also should look into that with the African partners, for them the water use is uh, of huge importance and we know how to tackle that. We have state-of-the-art, world-class technologies like in the sewage water treatments, treatments, irrigation, amelioration and other sectors. We are sometimes best in the world and uh, the water use should also be placed high on our bilateral scientific agenda and definitely should have a deserving place in our cooperation. The water use in agricultural technologies could be followed up on, Rush on during next year's Russia's presidency in BRICS. We could cooperate with Africa on water and environmental conservation and under the aegis of our presidency in BRICS, Russian Academy of Sciences will be holding a number of events in 2024. We'll mark the 300th anniversary of the Russian Academy of Sciences, founded by Emperor Peter the Great in, in 1724. There will be gala and grand celebrations and academic and scientific events, and we invite our African colleagues to join and attend. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Anton. I believe that this center that is being established in Ethiopia will be the first canary of our center creation in the African countries and such centers may become a springboard for the adaptation and transfer of our technologies and solutions. We could establish exhibition platforms, including online ones, so that the African countries could get to know the advances of Russian science and technology. And, and for the information of our African friends, I must say that apart from the 300th anniversary of the Academy of Sciences next year, now we're going through a decade of science and technology in this country, so the agenda of that decade may be of interest for the African countries. Let me yield to our friend from the Republic of Mozambique, member of Parliament of the Republic of Mozambique, Madam Kenseita Ernesto Harnesartana. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak up. Esteemed Vice President, 
Deputy Head of the State Duma, Your Excellences, uh, Mr. Ambassadors, dear participants, let me on behalf of the Chair of our Parliament and members of uh, Parliament of the Republic of Mozambique to welcome everyone present here, and especially the people of Russia and all the representatives of the executive authorities of Russia. We are grateful for the kind invitation to attend that second interparliamentary conference Russia-Africa. And we feel at home thanks to the hospitality that we receive here in Moscow. That's vision, that's a approach used by the people of Russia, bring together all the people in the world, including the ones living in Africa, the support for the fight for independence, recognition of culture and other values is typical of the Russian approach. And therefore, this is of no surprise that such a conference was initiated, which shows the hospitality and sympathy of the Russian people to Africa. It contributes to looking for inclusive, seeking inclusive solutions to the problems in Africa. Dear participants, although all topics are clearly very important, but we decided to support especially the science and education cooperation on June 25, 2021, it was stated that we have to develop science and education, which has to contribute to growth in all the spheres. In that sense, the cooperation with Russia and with the people of Russia will have great importance. And we are working to achieve the goals of 2030. That's, this plan offers new opportunities, but at the same time, new challenges for us. National plans in education have to meet modern approaches to education. And if we're Mozambique is uh, working to make sure that education is developed continuously, which has to impact social and other spheres. As for other problems related to especially fuel and energy issues, climate issues, now Mozambique faces lots of very difficult challenges. Training specialists and experts in that area will help us to address these problems, just like meeting the demands of the market. In terms of mining, extraction of oil and gas, we have to use our resources economically and efficiently. As for agriculture is concerned, this area is the basic one for the development, and we have to train specialists who will work in these areas, who will efficiently use new technologies. And in that sense, uh, we cannot uh, overestimate the importance of uh, working along with Russia. Dear participants, the northern region since 2017 is, has been facing the problems of violence, which prevent us from exploring natural resources, which actually told victims and claiming the lives of students and school children at the same time. But in order to create better conditions for our people, we have to set peace in the areas where terrorists are killing peaceful citizens. And we believe that the educational institutions as well as the universities have to play a certain role. Mozambique 
introduces new curricula and new syllabus. We are working on revisiting a law on vocational education and professional training. We thank you very much for the opportunity to speak up, and we wish every success to our conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a very interesting contribution where you clearly outlined the main areas of our interaction, the era of uh, science and technologies. We will not list all of them, but we are among the leaders at the global level, and certainly the questions of safety and security that uh, is of a high-tech nature as well, clearly very important for Africa especially in the areas where warlords and terrorists are active. Now we'd like to proceed with the science and technology, which is important for every African nation. That's certainly healthcare. That's about uh, contagious diseases and uh, setting up healthy society. And I invite Vacheslav Smolensky, deputy head of Rospotrebnadzor, on the Russian Consumer Rights Watchdog. I do hope that Rospotrebnadzor is a buzzword, not only in Russia, but uh, in Africa as well, because this organization did a lot in order to eradicate COVID-19, but in order to fight other uh, viruses such as Ebola, for instance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Alexei and others, uh, really, infections and the pandemic are the one of the main uh, barriers which impede the economic development of the African continent. And uh, Russia has uh, an extensive experience of fighting uh, the pandemic, and uh, uh, this science is more than 100 years old and therefore the USSR as well as Russia consider that one of the priorities in our cooperation with Africa, that area is very science intensive historically. The USSR did a lot in order to combat the pandemic in Africa in 1965. Ivan Ladny headed the team working against the smallpox in 29 countries of Africa. And by 1977, it was totally eradicated, then cholera eradication in 1971. 1974 in Kenya, plague being eradicated in Madagascar. These are the examples of help provided by the USSR when the Soviet scientists extended an arm of assistance uh, to fight uh, certain pandemic and fevers. Unfortunately, for some reasons, uh, that cooperation was terminated, and Russia could not afford providing such an assistance, and uh, um, Russia was replaced with other partners in that sense. But nevertheless, we decided to resume that cooperation, and this is an evil wind that blows nobody good, as the Russian proverb goes. The outbreak of uh, one of the biggest Ebola uh, fever uh, took place, and following the instruction of the president of Russia, our doctors were um, sent on a business mission there. And uh, from now on, we are developing our cooperation with many African nations. As a result of this eight-year-long cooperation, we had about 60 different expeditions to monitor and eradicate outbreaks. We trained. Uh, 20 test systems along with the scientists from Africa. We have supplied four mobile labs that now are working in three countries of Africa, absolutely for free. 1.5 uh, test systems amid the COVID-19 pandemic, which were sent immediately to the African countries in order to identify the people who have contracted uh, COVID-19. Now we are working with more than 10 countries. Ms. Popova, head of Rospotrebnadzor, visited Rwanda, Uganda, and Burundi. In Burundi, a lab was inaugurated, which is totally with it, fitted with the Russian equipment. And our doctors are working there. We signed a memorandum of understanding with Rwanda and Uganda, meeting two presidents, Mr. Museveni from Uganda and uh, the president of Burundi. The main question which was put forward is about the independence and self-sufficiency 
questions in terms of uh, the scientific support of uh, uh, combating the outbreaks of different diseases. Many partners uh, who assist the African countries do not make them independent. The assistance is provided the way that Africa no longer has an opportunity to produce their own vaccines, that they have no capacity to develop their own test systems, and the experts are being taken away from the country. But Russia, when fighting the pandemic, follows three main principles. This is about the sovereignty of uh, different countries in terms of uh, their biological sovereignty. The countries have to have their own labs. Secondly, scaling up of uh, their technological and uh, workforce potential. And number three, this is about transferring of the science-intensive technologies to fight against different infections. We do not hide anything. We do not hold anything confidential. We transfer everything we have so as to make that African countries are totally independent and sovereign. So the infectious diseases um, combating is science-intensive, and we're ready to help African countries to do that on their own. This year, we have scheduled a number of events, and we have invited a number of countries to attend them. And we welcome uh, as many as possible experts from Africa. This depends only on you. And certainly, we are looking forward to set up a new track on that topic with your competent experts. So this is what we're going to discuss at the Russian-African Summit meeting in July. Thank you, thank you so much, Vyacheslav. It was a very succinct uh, contribution. Sovereignty in terms of R&D, training of workforce, and transferring of the state of the art technology. These three principles, I think, have to become a key one for our cooperation. If Ivan Ivanovich allows me, as the main moderator, I would uh, reshape, uh, actually change the list of speakers as far as we're speaking about healthcare. If you do not mind, let's give the floor to, to our colleagues who will speak about healthcare, and then we will move forward following our list of speakers. Then I invite Vadim Tarasov, director of the Institute of Translation Medicine from the first medical institute named after Sechen. Do you agree with these three principles? Esteemed anchors, esteemed co-hosts, dear colleagues, your excellences. That's great that I'm going to pick it up from the previous speakers. I'll speak about health care. Taking care of uh, people's health, this is one of the key priorities for any country. Uh, the ensuring the supply of drugs is of key priority for every country. We have to keep the balance between the research into drugs and that and the generic drugs. The development of the innovative drugs and medications usually would take about 10 to 15 years, and it would need about $15 billion and generic development takes only one or two years and would require only one or two million dollars for the development. The COVID-19 pandemic showed the importance of the pharmacy production assets and uh, technological advances. Uh, amid the shortage of medicine, uh, we saw that most of the countries of the world are totally dependent on the supplies from the developed countries, including the developing nations and emerging markets with uh, big budgets. In fact, now many countries may determine what countries may get a supply of drugs. The, the, form, the fate of certain countries and even people would uh, be influenced. Some of the countries launched uh, the reproduction of uh, the medicine uh, to fight COVID-19. Sputnik V, for instance, a vaccine which was approved in more than 70 countries with the population of more than 7 billion people, which really saved uh, millions of lives. The lessons of the pandemic should be remembered because um, the people's health uh, would certainly uh, have a say on the country's well-being. The economic potential is on the rise. 
in 2021 it amounted to more than several trillion dollars and now this growth is due to the most advanced nations which uh, can boast the high drugs provision african countries development is uh, uh, going on very quickly the population in africa is 1. 2 billion people and uh, the economic growth is about 5%. The lifespan varies from, actually, the difference in the lifespan is um, about 15 to 20 years, uh, depending on the country. Therefore, the drug security as well as uh, strengthening of the health care is among the top priorities for these countries. Depending on the aging of the population, the structure of health care and uh, drug provision would uh, differ. We offer new forms for cooperation to African partners, such as comprehensive uh, system for the development and production of drugs, training of specialists. It would be expedient to start with the production of generic drugs uh, and gradually introducing the homemade innovative drugs. We can start with a model which would imply the design and construction uh, for production assets from scratch so that um, you could make the products of the Russian origin and then you would be capable of producing your own drugs. So the, after the registration of the Russian drugs, it's very important that uh, these drugs are recognized uh, abroad as well. The same should be true for the licensed uh, production sites in Russia and the parliamentary support is needed there. The national systems of health care would benefit from the intergovernmental programs to be launched. It is very important to, to recognize uh, the education certificates of our countries. Together, we can develop the pharmaceutical industry in the African countries, the one which will help to boost development and cooperation between our universities, industries, and partners, therefore ensuring drug supply to the African nations. It would facilitate the economic development and create necessary achievement in order to um, proceed from the scientific advances. So such an institute is ready to contribute to that program. Altogether, we will prevail and we will ensure that uh, African nations get a real drug sovereignty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vadim. It was very concise, very clear. And I'm inviting our next participant, uh, Anna Kamler. And while she is approaching the rostrum, I'd like to tell you that uh, this scheme, this approach, when we all together create certain industry, in that case, that's a pharmaceutical industry. It is relevant both for Russia and for Africa and can serve as a role model for interaction in other science-intensive industries. Anna is a quite young lady, and that's clearly very important for Africa because in Agenda 2063, uh, the main role is to be played by women, and Anna is representing a technological startup. The women in Russia, uh, in Africa, are number one in terms of the number of startups uh, launched, and uh, Anna is a uh, would-be mother, and the demographic problem for Africa is clearly very important, and uh, you see that we are contributing to solving the problem of diminishing population in the world. Anna, can you be rather specific and very concise? Can you elaborate on what production assets can be uh, launched in Africa? Thank you. I'm a representative of a little innovative uh, company and a representative of the Academy of Sciences. I'm head of lab of an academic university. Therefore, I may say that Africa now has certain projects of a major Russian business, but uh, we do not see any mechanisms to help uh, SMEs from Russia to penetrate into the African market. And this includes the high-tech market. SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises from Russia are very competitive there. Many technologies, high-tech technologies in Russia are being developed by small and medium-sized enterprises uh, with the support of the support uh, foundations, for instance. 
Antibacterial coating on textile is among such technologies. This technology has a number of benefits. Including simplicity, it is a one-step process that requires no sophisticated and complex technological moves or dangerous solutions. You can work with different solutions. We don't work with silver, so our technology is competitive. And this textile can suppress 99.9% .9 of all bacteria. And this type of materials may, uh, may transfer and carry infectious diseases. So we are interested in introducing this technology in Africa. And definitely the production should be localized in Africa. So the implementation <coughs> Well, we need me mechanisms for the implementation, specific ones. So we need local manpower whom we would train, and we need to commercialize this technology on the ground and the joint expertise that we may elaborate together with the Africans may be used to improve our products for the Russian market, including. So we need that. There are There is a need for methods of support of SME cooperation in high-tech environment aimed at small and medium enterprises in particular. And we need mechanisms and arrangements of intellectual property rights regulation. So we will, we are planning the transfer of technology. And we will <coughs> jointly use the the product, intellectual products. So we need a transparent IP arrangement in place. So the form of in incorporation also must be thought over to organize a joint manufacturing site in Africa, and as well as the financial interaction mechanisms and schematics, because this is a modern world, and we, at the contemporary stage, should counter the sanction, sanctions pressure of unfriendly countries. So we're interested in introducing and deploying our technology that has stood the test of the tropic climate for many months. It has been used and it, we know for sure it prevents intra-hospital infections, intra-ward infections, and we would like to work at the African market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. You are very specific and concrete and uh, we have a lot of tested technologies and solutions and this is only one sole example to cite and we have been taking uh, medicine as a, as a model for cooperation but energy in geology and space exploration in IT we have lots of small innovative enterprises startups and many of them are situated in Africa so I think that our support lended to small and medium enterprises is of paramount importance. Now I'd like to yield to our guest from Belarus, member of the Permanent Commission for International Affairs of the Chamber of Representatives of the National Assembly of Belarus, Mr. Pavel Papko. Pavel, you know, me being an African studies researcher, an African researcher, I was impressed by the visit paid by the Belarusian president to Africa, to Zimbabwe. He went there and said what exactly Belarus would do for Africa, what specific amount of, of hardware, number of hardware and the quantity of hardware Belarus would supply. How that, how that come? Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the members of parliament of the National Assembly of Belarus. And uh, I'd like also to thank the State Duma of the Russian Federation for bringing together single-minded people who I need, to, I need not preach to the converted that the, the, the science matters a lot in, in shaping and improving the human capital of our countries. And you have been mentioning our president. President of Belarus, Lukashenko, is 
a personality of great scale and importance. And when I sat here listening about the quality and technologies, I must say that strikes a chord in my heart and we are supportive of such practices. Our union state of Russia and Belarus is comprised of these two republics. The deputies, the members of parliament of both of our countries want to improve the living standards of our people and deploy technologies. We all think about the accessibility and the affordability of education and science. But in Russia and in Belarus, we guarantee also the human dimension. The human dimension is not left behind when the students and the youths come to Russia or Belarus to study. And we have 50 modern universities in Belarus. We are human-centered. And the moderator mentioned the USSR. And we add that we have preserved the traditions, the conventional traditional values and upbringing and education that help us maintain our, our world order and protect our world. Speaking about parliamentary toolkit, we must not be oblivious of the groups of friendship. In Belarus, we have 75 groups of friendship, and we invite different countries. We have a good standing relationship with Egypt, and we invite other African nations to establish groups of friendship with Belarus, and uh, they may be a platform of agile day-to-day, -day, even online cooperation and exchanges of technologies, solutions, and uh, on, of how we view the interaction. We can offer affordable prices in education and science and the peaceful skies, calm and peaceful streets, no crimes in the streets, low crime rates. I'd like to express the gratitude to the conference organizers for having this shared view about sanctions that have been used as a weapon against us, our, our, our mindset. And today we are guests in one of the most progressive and democratic countries of the world, which is the Russian Federation. And we are thankful to the State Duma for bringing together single-minded people here. So us members of parliament should start thinking and entertaining systemic strategic issues. And we must establish groups of friendship, sign more accords and agreements and memoranda. Because together with you today, we can preserve, in concert, we can preserve the, the world peace and development. We're strong when united. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel. I would like now to invite a member of parliament of the National uh, Assembly of Togo, Lee's Republic, Mr. Uyge Kagbar, while he is preparing to go onto the sea scene. I'd like to fully support the previous speaker who has used the word sanctions and these sanctions also embrace 
solu technological solutions and science. The West wants to conserve the low technical level of the African countries and Russia. They try to bar the Africans in the West. They try to bar the Africans from the advanced stages of research. But here in Russia and in Africa, we have very good technological solutions. If we carry them through, take them through, we will be able to overtake uh, this gap and bridge the gap. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, co-moderators, excellencies, ambassadors, members of parliament, it's a, a privilege and an honor for me to speak at this round table, saying a few words on our support, full-fledged support for S and E Science and Education Corporation. As members of parliament, we were pleased to receive the invitation of the State Duma that is renowned and acclaimed as a symbol of today's world. And this will be another opportunity for us to, to speak with specific proposals, heading the Parliamentary Commission on Education in Togo, I must say that for me it is an opportunity to establish close ties with our partners for the sake of developing technologies, solutions, science and uh, AI. We live at an age that has been offering ample opportunities for our development. We know that how neo-colonialism wants to seize our riches and assets. And at the 44th conference in Indonesia, it was stated that we must put an end to that. All the I, IT and cyber attack that are now advancing in the world must be propitious to our development. And uh, the Interparliamentary Union during the, that conference, 44th conference in Indonesia, paid special heed to the fact that ICT is a cornerstone of the global development nowadays. So I, I highlight the resolution of the Interparliamentary Union and say that we want to use the state of the art technology in, in science education and want us to, to think more about people who need personal data protection. We need, they need full access to infrastructure. And uh, this support of s and cooperation by parliaments is a priority for us. We should join hands in our support landed to, to youth's development of solutions. We should pursue mutual backing for better and more efficient exchanges. We should support our young scientists and uh, create an enabling environment for free exchanges of solutions between the African countries and the Russian Federation. And uh, it has been noted that such cooperation between Russia and Egypt may be taken as a model. So this is why parliaments must be thinking on a daily basis 
how to improve that sphere. We, we must be aware and conscious of the fact that science and education hold the future for our countries. And our cooperation must definitely become a, a, a driver for our development so that we must be certain of our future and we must use all the toolbox that we have at hand to overcome all the obstacles. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. While our next speaker is going to ascend this stage, an academician of the agricultural sciences, Yakov Lobachevsky, I must comment on what has been said, said by the Congolese uh, speak about the ICT and their significance. Indeed, communication and information today have become a productive force that may be utilized both for the benefit of people or against people, maybe bo either a boon or a bane. So we must exercise and show solidarity in this matter. So in this country, we have a lot of solutions like the smart city. You know about that probably. We have a plenty uh, of services that make the lives of our people easier. And Africans may be also very advanced in IT because 65% of Africans are below 25 years of age. It's a young, very young continent. So with respect of DeFi, decentralized finance, we trail the Africans so we may learn from one another in the interests of our of our people and for their benefit, for their sake, and we should feed everybody and uh, provide provide uh, good conditions for everyone. But shall, shall we give them a rod or a fish? We should give them definitely a rod, a fishing rod. Good afternoon, dear participants, dear moderators, dear African guests. I represent the agricultural science here. For us, the transfer of state-of-the-art solutions and exchanges are of, sig of much significance. Like we want always to, to transfer to help, but that may be a two-way street. That must be a two-way street, I think. So after all, we have examples the site of uh, the mutual penetration and the use of the scientific advances of our African colleagues. There is a journal that is called Mechanization of Agriculture in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. It, is, uh, it comes out in Japan, and I'm a Russian co-editor, and I have an opportunity to read articles by our African and Asian and Latin American colleagues and must say that some of the results and outcomes of their studies and the findings are very interesting. So it would be more appropriate to speak not about the transfer of technologies and solutions, but of interaction and exchanges. We have a lot of common issues like the protection of soils, anti-erosion arrangements, anti-wind blowing, the, the reasonable use of water, melioration, irrigation, the application of rational technologies, the drip drip irrigation and other uh, sub-ground, underground irrigation systems. We must definitely protect the flora and fauna and receive the necessary vaccines against different flus and the swine pest. So we need to, to unify our uh, capabilities this year. We have gathered record crops of grains, 145 million tons, and uh, so it is one million. It is one ton of grain per per person per capita in this in this country. So we are ready to share this technology, our know-how, 
you have new varieties and new crops, uh, studies of seeds, technologies of soil treatment and, uh, and sowing and harvesting. But this is only half of the process. The other half is how to use the crops and the stockpiles. We have to be capable of uh, processing the results and get the produce. And if we exchange anything, we have to exchange the solutions, not just put the raw materials, bring that from one point to another, etc. And the same is true of the technical means. Today, we are living in the age of uh, digital technologies, automation, robotization, artificial intelligence, uh, digital twins, and other solutions. We are ready to share these are our achievements. Somehow, it's been believed that um, this is the Western equipment, this is which is the most uh, sophisticated, but this is not true. Russia is also home to very efficient technical solutions, the ones which might be used in Africa. I cannot even list all the problems there, and I think that Ms. Abramov, it would be very good to arrange a joint conference on the problems of agriculture to discuss uh, that uh, from A to Z. Let me say a few words about education. As far as I represent an academic science, will not speak about the university education, but I would rather speak about how we train the fellows in R&D institutes. We have accumulated a vast experience in that sense. We have created technologies how to train fellows, not the specialists who would work in certain industries, but these would be the fellows of R&D institutes. The uh, syllabus of the training program has to match the R&D means that the person will not just uh, uh, embark on some academic problem, but would uh, deal with some practical problem, and therefore would be a very competent specialist at the end of the day. Deputy Minister today spoke about uh, some personal cases. Let me take 30 seconds of your attention, just like our colleagues. I worked for 25 years as a professor in the Moscow Agricultural University and had a very good uh, student from Sudan. People from Africa are very industrious and very proactive. Along with that student from Sudan, we started one of uh, the features of the soil in Sudan. We have determined some parameters, um, but Actually, all in all, that solution weighed about 300 kilos. I suggested that this experiment is held in Russia. And he said, no, have to develop my country. And can imagine, he carried 300 kilos of that equipment in his personal luggage, uh, certainly in several iterations to Sudan. And we uh, measures the parameters. And I did this experiment at Russia as well, and so the results of the experiment in Russia totally matched uh, the one held in Sudan. It was our joint work, so dear colleagues, we are ready to work in that direction. We invite students, BA students, to continue their education in Russia. We offer to you training in our R&D institutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> colleagues, and probably you have noted that many of our co colleagues from African nations had to leave our roundtable, and we understand that, that uh, within that conference, Russia and Africa in a multipolar world is accompanied by a number of uh, parallel events. I will have to excuse myself, but it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the roundtable is over. But before I excuse myself, I have, I would like to thank cordially all the speakers, all the attendees, specialists from Africa, from Russia. But the main message is that we feel a mutual interest in moving forward. We see the ways we can take in order to move forward. That's the most important thing. But at the same time, we keep 
we will retain mutual interest, mutual respect, mutual interest in the questions that we are discussing all together, that we're addressing all together. I wish every success to all of us in completing that roundtable discussion. Thank you so much for your participation. And we do hope very much that the wishes which were expressed by our speakers addressing the MPs would be taken into consideration. With a reference to the previous speaker, I may say the following. Africa is the richest continent, the richest territory, which may feed itself totally. The, uh, there used to be some food basket program for certain countries. Russia managed to do that, but in 1987, when I was school age, we had a food program because most of the produce of agricultural products had to be imported from abroad. This is what is taking place in Africa. I think that our agricultural and farming technologies will help to address that problem. In that sense, I totally agree that we have to arrange a separate uh, standalone conference and probably it could be a section within the upcoming Russia-Africa summit meeting. So I'd like to pass the floor to our next speaker. We have three more speakers. An MP from Gambia, Mr. Yaha Sanyanga. Over to you. Should we expect the speaker? Uh, everybody, I thank the moderators uh, uh, for the wonderful job. I am Honorable Yahya Sanyang uh, from Gambia. I'm the chairperson for government project monitoring and uh, uh, implementation. Uh, today, I want to talk briefly uh, on scientific research uh, in our African universities. Uh, in the full disclosure of facts, I am a civil engineer uh, by profession and uh, I have conducted uh, quite a lot of research uh, outside the Gambia, especially uh, into uh, qualities uh, of, of water quality. Uh, scientific research has recently become a vision and mission statement for many universities in Africa. Some universities have uh, even stated that their vision is of becoming research-intensive institutions in the near future. Now the question is, are uh, African universities really into research? Uh, are these research uh, productive uh, for the socio-economic development of Africa? Uh, because for me, the way forward uh, will be African, research, African universities to engage themselves into intensive research. Uh, that is why we are going to uh, appeal to Russian universities uh, instead of uh, giving scholarships to African students to come to Russia, uh, it will be very important for Russian universities to pair with uh, African universities to tune in African universities to, act to enhance and develop research in, in, in Africa. Because Africa loves Russia, uh, we love Russia for the fact that we trust Russia uh, Russia doesn't have any colonial legacy in Africa, and Russia doesn't bully. Uh, so if Russia can um, definitely put this into consideration, twin and pair universities in Africa to the renowned universities in Russia to, for, for, to, to enhance uh, research in Africa. For others, for others, their mission involves excellence in teaching, learning, research, and uh, community outreach programs, yet others aim to work collaboratively with international researchers for mutual benefit. Observation of African universities indicate that most universities have other way, no evolving scientific research culture and weak research culture or no scientific research culture at all. Teaching continues to occupy a central pool through, through they claim to be research-oriented when actually they are not research-oriented. Yet it is doubtful if a university could attain research excellence or contribute to natural, uh, the tra na national transformation of its country through the creation, of, through creation and application to transfer knowledge with, uh, without a vibrant scientific research culture. Uh, what I'm trying to say here, 
uh, for, for, for us to uh, transfer knowledge, enhance knowledge, uh, promote knowledge in African universities, most of our universities need to be scientifically uh, uh, been oriented. African universities can only be useful to African socio-economic development if they are research-oriented, that are instead of principally concentrating on only teaching. Scientific research in many universities will improve our human conditions as well. Africa can only develop our human condition, our capital conditions, everything in our, in, about Africa can only develop if our, research, if our universities uh, become research center. We have colonial history and we are still haunted uh, by our colonial past. I said that before, Russia doesn't have any colonial legacy in Africa. One thing that disturbs Africa, that is affecting Africa still, is our colonial legacy, and this keeps still haunting us, affecting most of our development. We need mindset that is research concluded. And that's the end of my, my, speech, my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You know, it happened by accident that the topic is actually the same, so you picked it up from the previous speaker, who spoke about uh, the development of cooperation in agriculture. And uh, the previous speaker was dealing with uh, providing necessary food, uh, clean water to the people. And you see that we're sharing our vision and how we address our common problems. And this is just excellent. And saying that, I would like to invite the director of the Federal Research Center Institute of Biology of uh, Southern Seas, Mr. Gorbunov. Roman, over to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Abramova. Let's speak about fishing rods. Well, colleagues, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak uh, in front of you at such an August meeting. My institute cooperates with African nations along the lines of the Russian foreign policy, and we are strengthening long-term mutually beneficial partnership. We are contributing for the development of science, natural resources extraction and training, professional scientific workforce. One of the main objectives and priorities today, which act as uh, the top priority for us, uh, the food security, uh, climate change, blue economy. All these areas certainly are being offered to, to be studied along with our uh, foreign partners, African partners. The Institute of Southern Seas uh, cooperates with a number of organizations from Africa. Uh, we are dealing with uh, Guinea starting from 1980s, when following the initiative of the USSR and our Guinea colleagues and Center for Ocean Research was set up and we did a lot of research there and starting from uh, the year 2000, um, that cooperation is resumed and we are finally working together. We are working with the uh, Republic of Djibouti. Aquaculture is being focused. This is a top priority for us, and we are making an atlas of the promising areas for development of these kind of uh, species and varieties. And uh, the achievements of uh, these our works and projects are very well scalable. We are creating necessary conditions to attract the Russian business to these territories because we are developing real mechanisms. What technologies uh, have to be used there? This is what we focus on. You also said that probably we have uh, to elaborate on aquaculture. We should not lose our achievements, and probably this should be put on record. We are dealing with Zimbabwe and Constantin already spoke about our research in terms of the soils. We have a huge research center, and we're dealing not only with marine species uh, or aquaculture, but we 
For instance, a part of the Joint Russian Ethiopian Research Center, and we are one of the founders of uh, the African Network University, means that we are contributing to setting up a shared or a unified educational environment providing for academic mobility and cultural dialogue. I'd like to note a number of questions so that we have to note. First of all, shortage of modern infrastructure necessary for the modern R&D in Africa, a gap between the com level of competences of our scientists. There is a competition against the European Research Institutes, which continue their work on these territories. In order to address the upcoming problems, we need a concerted approach from the local authorities. We need better cooperation among the research and educational institutions. We need the contribution of the private business working there on these territories. One of our top priorities there is restoration of our historic partnership with the center in Equatorial Guinea. We also have to set up our R&D institutes in other African nations in order to bring our scientific operation to a total different level. Therefore, it would need updating the intergovernmental agreements, uh, providing scholarships to fellows and scientists. The projects which are being announced now would require co-funding from our colleagues. And uh, such projects uh, sometimes are not possible to be implemented unilaterally. Once the governments uh, support our research into ocean studies, biotechnology studies, uh, we will cooperate better with uh, uh, the centers in uh, Guinea. And I'm about to finish my pitch. I will proceed with uh, spe some specific offers. You have 30 seconds. OK, thank you so much. Intergovernmental agreement on the development of infrastructure. Probably we have to set up uh, observatories to monitor an environment, create necessary conditions for training uh, well-trained specialists in the scientific organizations, because the quotas are allocated only to the education providers. And certainly, we have uh, to bring about uh, scholarship programs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I ask everyone who took part in our today's session, I will provide you with the email address so that you could send your presentations and your notes. We have one more speaker on my list, and uh, there are people who would like to share their comments, so let us determine. We are working for almost two hours. I would like to pass the floor to a professor from uh, Russian People's Friendship University, Mr. Kutsi Mikhail, and uh, I would like to confer in you. Are we going to spend 10 minutes more so that those who would like to share their comments would like to ask questions? Do that, or we listen to Mr. Professor and we call it a day. So we will call it a day, so everyone is tired. OK, OK, sounds good. Sounds good over to you. Good afternoon, esteemed members of parliament, your excellences. I will speak about uh, the how to transfer knowledge, modernization, which rests on the ideas of progress and uh, Cultural breaches will result only in conflicts and civil war, something that we see in some countries of Africa. Western languages and Western cultures are offered as a product to be bought at a very high price, and at the same time, we uh, somehow do not understand that we are losing our identity. Dear guests in the world, there is no single country which can stay progressive but using other people's language. Russia speaks um, Russian, 
China speaks Chinese, Japan speaks Japanese. Science and education and knowledge are indivisible from language, and language is not just a cultural phenomenon which helps people to determine their identity, but it is also a source which generates knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, it's high time for us not only to speak, but also to act. We have to start decolonization of our consciousness and our minds. Uh, the systems imposed on us by the former colonizers remains intact. So they have a say on uh, our minds exploiting the former colonies. Under the pretext of training personnel for Africa, the former metropolis have been sending their proxies to control the African resources and reserves. And kinda, they become in charge of the African scientific sphere and resources and manpower. And um, the African scientists have to use Western languages for their academic and scientific activities, including publications. And they must uh, also put up with uh, political puppet masters perpetrating coup d'etats and invasions of Iraq, Syria, Libya, and other countries, which is inadmissible. In conclusion, I'd like to frustrate you. Uh, many people think that mul multilingualism is a problem for Africa because it is a root cause of their backwardness, but it is not the case. It is not true. An example to cite is Russia that has been proud of its ethnic uh, richness and has been supporting even small indigenous peoples of the North languages. And Professor Alexandrov has has told us gratifying news that the, the, well, the teaching of African languages has been expanding, and letters, public uh, journals, scientific journals in uh, African languages to so all decolonizing in science and education is a very relevant issue for everybody, including for Russian and African states. We must fight the new colonialism the intellectual suppression, which is so we are in the same boat and we must fight against that. And I'd like to yield to Alexei for the concluding remarks. My co-moderator, Mr. Maslow, thank you very much. Thank you for your active proposals and thank you for your ideas, your insight. We have a clear idea where we should be heading, which is specifically major scientific and education programs and projects and consortia of knowledge and that not be only on paper, ink on paper. We should bring up and educate new generations of people. We all recall the huge, the vast uh, experience of cooperation between Africa and the USSR, but the new young generations don't know about that. So what we will be doing shortly is not for the sake of us, but for the sake of the ensuing generations that will be active politically, economically, and socially in the years to come. So we should accumulate the huge array of data about Africa in this country and vice versa. The Africans should get to know the Russian Federation better in different spheres. So I think <clears throat> that what we will be doing today should come out as a as a compendium of materials and ideas so that we should follow up on that future thank you very much i'd like to thank everyone saying that we have singled out four main cooperation areas joint research between russia and africa personnel training, not only high-skilled and top-notch professionals, but also working professions, training school children jointly, and finally, decolonizing science and uh, 
the production of high-tech products locally, on the ground in Africa. I think that our colleagues in Africa, if they have have had interest in, in, in the ideas expressed by the Russian co-speakers, may now have the opportunity to exchange contacts. And all those who have taken the floor today, please submit your uh, papers, submit your reports, and the email is as follows, Africa at Duma, full stop, gov, full stop, are you? So I would ask all the speakers to present and submit their precious and valuable insights so that we do not lose anything of that. I thank all the African and Russian presenters and speakers. Together we will win.